The siphon is a fascinating display of physics that scientists still argue about to this day. There's evidence that the siphon has been around since 600 BC, where the Greeks use it to punish you for putting too much alcohol in your cup. But what does a siphon even do? Now initially, this seems unnatural. How is it even possible that water travels uphill with no forces added? Here's another demo showing water traveling directly upward. Now that's pretty cool, but check this out. So you can see how the water always matches the level of the surface of the reservoir, even in the tube. Look at that. And it always does. Regardless if I raise it up or if I lower it, it'll always match it. I'll explain this concept at the end of the video. Okay, what the f*** is going on? The theory that explained this phenomenon for centuries was that the atmospheric pressure was pushing it down. This basically relied on the atmosphere pushing down on vacuum pockets created at the top of the siphon where the water divides for brief moments. As the water on the right side falls into the empty cup, microscopic vacuum pockets open up simultaneously. Right as the pocket of zero pressure is created, the atmospheric pressure from the outside world pushes down onto the water to fill the void. When the water pushes on the water on the right hand side of the previous void, the momentum that pushes the water down into the cup again creates another vacuum pocket. Once again, atmospheric pressure fills in the void and then pushes the water down. This process continues until there is no more water in the left hand cup to fill in the vacuum. This was a theory believed for hundreds of years, and now we know that it's completely wrong. There's two things that debunk this theory. The first is that the bigger the height difference, the faster the flow rate. So let's put one siphon on one elevated height and the other siphon on one other height that's lower, and let's see which one drains first. This shows that there's a force controlling the flow rate, and this force is gravity. If atmospheric pressure was really powering the siphon, the time it takes to fill up would be constant regardless of the height difference. Another debunk is the fact that siphons have been used in controlled vacuum conditions. This means that there is no atmospheric pressure anywhere in the system, yet the siphon still worked. The second false theory on the siphon is that it relies on the difference between weight on both sides. Check this out. This is Boyle's self-flowing flask. If you fill it up, what do you think is going to happen? I put a poll in the top right, so take a moment to think about it and vote. Now that that's done, what will actually happen? If you look at this cup with normal intuition, you would clearly see that there's more weight on the left hand side than there is on the right hand side in the handle. So that means that the higher weight of the water should push the lower weight of water and bring it back into the container. Oh wait, this doesn't happen. What actually happens is that the water at the right surface always matches the surface height of the left hand side. There's an old saying by Aristotle regarding water flow, water seeks its own level. This is supported by Boyle's self-flowing flask and our siphon demonstration. But why exactly does this even happen? Why does the water match the surface of the reservoir? This whole process boils down into one simple equation. Fluid pressure is density of the liquid times the height difference times gravity, and this equation defines what occurs in the siphon. The reason why a siphon works is because a reservoir at the elevated height position has more pressure than a reservoir in the lower position. When you look at the equations for both of these fluid pressures, you'll notice that the only reason the reservoir contains more fluid pressure is because it has a higher height at the lower reservoir. In this case, density is constant because both reservoirs contain water, and gravity is obviously the same since they're both on planet Earth. So we've seen that water and a siphon will always match each other's height due to the equalization of fluid pressures. But what would happen if we played with the density and put some vegetable oil on one side of the system? So what's going on here? Well, it turns out that since the right side contains more oil, which is less dense than water, it will push up higher than the left hand side which mostly contains water. And it turns out that math actually supports this result. Take a look at this example. Here is a closed system tube filled with water and oil. 
On the left side contains all water, whereas the right hand side contains half oil and half water. We can do the math on both sides of the system to determine each of the fluid pressures. Assuming the height is 1 meter, the left side's pressure is the density of water times gravity times the height. This gives us a fluid of 9,970.6 pascals. On the right side, we have to calculate the pressure of both oil and water, and then add them together. We know that half of it is water, and the other half is oil, so we can easily calculate this using the same equation. This gives us a total force of 9,478 pascals. This means that it has less pressure than the left side, so the left side will push up the right side in order to balance the pressure. This works because as the fluid on the left side raises, the fluid on the right side also lowers, which if you look at the equation and understand how the height affects pressure, this makes complete sense. So that's how 80% of the siphon works, but we're still missing a fundamental force that's essential for the siphon to operate. This force is known as a cohesive force, also known as a sticky force. This essentially means how well molecules in the liquid stick to one another. This force comes into play at the top of the siphon when the water is divided into each of the sides. In a vacuum, many siphons were tested, but they never seemed to work, which made it clear that the siphon needed atmospheric pressure to operate, something that we know now isn't true. What was actually making the siphon fail to operate in the vacuum was a weak cohesive force of the liquid being used. The liquid wouldn't stick together as it went over the hump. In 2012, two scientists tried using an ionic liquid in a siphon, which has a super strong cohesive force, and for the first time ever, the siphon worked in the vacuum without any atmospheric pressure. So to sum it up, a siphon relies purely on gravity and the cohesive force of the liquid. Atmospheric pressures and weight differences are proven false theories. If you guys made it this far, I really appreciate the support. I wouldn't have made this video if it wasn't for all the likes and comments on my previous videos. If you guys don't mind hitting the like button and comment what you want me to explain next, this would greatly help out the YouTube algorithm as well as the channel. Anyway guys, until next time, peace.